Hello YouTube, Electro here and welcome to our first episode, uh, our first Let's Play in Train Simulator 2015. Um, what I plan on doing in this first series of um, episodes is probably just going through the Academy and the tutorials just to let you know what um, TS 2015 is all about. I have played a few already but I will repeat them just for you guys. Um, so over here we have the train that we're going to be driving, uh, the scenario type and then the weather and the time. Um, so as you can see here we're looking at the primary controls of the Fowler F4 which is this steam train. It's going to take us five minutes, it's on low difficulty. I have already completed it but we will go through these all again. Um, as you can see as we go through we ultimately do the same mission but uh, we're looking at different trains. So we're looking at primary controls initially for the first four, um, and these are the first four types of locomotives. So um, we've got steam, uh, electric, electric, and diesel. And then we'll move on to the secondary controls in each of these. Then we'll be refueling water, coal, in the steam engine, um, refueling uh, is actually a diesel train sorry refueling diesel in this one and this one then we'll be doing some switching um, switching cabs basically on the diesel modern train and uh, again on the electric train then we'll actually get into some driving so we'll be driving this um, heavy diesel locomotive initially it's got a three on the difficulty so it obviously does get a lot harder uh, then we've got some coupling and uncoupling on the modern diesel coupling and uncoupling on the steam train likewise on the electric um, and then likewise on the diesel then we've got some switching junctions on the three main trains again um, then we've got a training academy. I don't think we're actually driving on that one. So we might start on that one. It might be the easiest option. Um, then we've got some objectives. So stopping at stations, loading passengers, loading and unloading on all three trains. Then we've got some safety systems. Um, signaling is quite a big thing in the game. So it's obviously about, what's that? Eight, obviously, uh, about, about eight episodes or eight um, short missions that we'll have to do just to learn all about signaling so I think what I'll do is I will start on the keyboard and mouse interface first um, I haven't done this one yet so it kind of makes sense to do this one so if you don't know what TS 2015 is all about ultimately it is this um, it's a train simulator it comes with a very basic package of trains and there are literally hundreds of add-on lines add-on trains um, if you get it through Steam, which most people will nowadays, um, it comes with the ability to download a lot of workshop items. So if you download another line um, and someone's made a mission for that line, then you can download that via the, the workshop. Um, sadly, a lot of the add-ons are quite expensive. But that's the nature of the beast, I think. So there we can see the four trains that we're going to be using throughout the academy. Welcome to TS Academy. Here you'll be able to learn about all operating trains and routes. All about operating trains and routes in Train Simulator. To begin, let's look at the interface available when using the keyboard and mouse. Close each message before attempting each installation. <coughs> okay, so we press F1 to bring up the task manager. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so we can press F2 to save. F3 brings up the mini HUD. Okay, so that's a miniature version of what we already had. F4 to bring up the full HUD. Press 9 to bring up the 2D map. And we can zoom in and out on that. We can hold right mouse button to move around. So key 1 is the cab view, 2 and 3 are third person views, 4 is the track side view, 5 is the passenger view when, a pass when there's a passenger in the train. 6 is a coupling view, 7 is the yard view, 8 is a field view. Press F12 to take a screenshot and use the free view key 8 to take a screenshot of your favourite train in the gallery below. So 8 is our free Use a flying camera. Do like the diesels, modern sort of American things. It's so pretty boring in terms of a first mission, but we've done it. Um, I'm going to move on to the Fowler and we'll do the primary controls. What I might do is do these in stages. So I'll do all the Fowler missions first and then I will do the primary controls, secondary controls on the BR-189 and then likewise for the 170 and the SD-70. So as I was saying before, you can buy a load of DLC for this game, which includes new trains, new routes, um, and a load of new missions. Um, the game's fairly limited in what you get initially, but um, for example, if you were to buy all of the DLC, then uh, you'd have such a huge game on your hands. Okay, so this is a BR4. F steam locomotive. You're about to learn the primary controls. You'll have a chance to start and stop the locomotive. Complete your section there. Okay. So we need to get moving. We need to pull the reverser full forward. To do this, rotate the lever clockwise. So you can literally grab that and turn it clockwise. Release the brakes, pull the lever to off. And then we can open the regulator, slide the lever slightly clockwise, and grab the lower bit. Or we can turn it that way. And that's us moving.
I'm going to get rid of the HUD for now. So now we need to start applying the brakes. We need to ensure the regulator is fully closed. So that's the regulator closed. And that's the brake pressure up here. Um, when it's displaying 21, the brakes are fully released. When the brakes are fully on, the needle will be at naught. So now we need to apply some brake. Now we're applying some brakes. Okay, so now we can apply the brakes to running, which is about there really. Not fully open or off, but there. And that will stop us. Now I should be able to put the brakes on. I think we came to a stop too quickly. What we need to do is just go up the um, up the line a little bit. break so that's us done for the primary controls on the steam train which is the, probably the easiest out of all of them to drive we're going to move on to the secondary controls on this steam locomotive. So the test track here is pretty boring once we get out onto the um, the main lines um, you'll see the difference well, much better. Certainly the American um, lines are quite interesting. So these will be the secondary controls. So it gets dark outside. You have to set the correct lamps depending on the service. For now we are a, a light engine. Press H on the keyboard five times to set the correct lamps. One, two, three, four, five.
wasn't strictly true. I have to press that seven times to do that. Um, so the whistle is a very important tool. Basically, this is the whistle here. That's it for that tutorial. going to group these together. So next is our refueling water. Now the Fowler uh, or any steam train needs water and coal in order to work properly. Some of the others just need diesel and obviously electric ones um, don't need anything because you either have this electric third rail or um, you have the pentagraph that goes up and picks up the overhead wires so now we need to learn how to refill the water so it needs water without it cannot function the water is converted into steam which provides pressure to move pistons and turn the wheels we need to pull forward and stop the locomotive by the water tower ensure that it's in line with the water filler on the tender so where is the water filler i think it's this thing behind possibly i'm assuming that's where we would store water and coal is on the tender on the rear Okay, so to move forward we need to do the regulator first. No. So much speed. I'm not hundred percent sure that is right, but maybe we do fill up from there. So we need to do eight. I think eight is like our virtual thingy. So now I'm refueling because it needs to be on the tender, doesn't it? Which is the back thing. And you can see our fuel or water gauge is going up. I don't think we've got a proper gauge in here that says how much water we're taking on. Maybe there is, I just don't know where it is. We did get an achievement there as well. Uh, and the last one for the Fowler will be um, refueling coal. Okay, so there's our coal shed by the looks of it. pull forwards and stop next to the coal tower. So we open our regulator ever so slightly. 
release our pressure in our brakes. Fine. No, we need to go forward a little bit more. See the coal going in. And we've got another achievement there. So that's us done for the Fowler in terms of the controls. What I'm going to move on to now is the coupling and uncoupling, switching junctions. And I think there are then two more. So we've got aspect, two aspect and three aspect signals. And then that will be us done for the Fowler. Okay, so we need to set the reverser, <coughs> release the brakes, and a small amount of regulator. Leave that down for now. Let the pressure build up. gone we can use a bit of regulator to get the speed up Don't want to go over that though it's probably a bit hard okay so we're coupled do this the easier way in terms of coupling. Job done. Okay, switching junctions is next.
So we'll learn about switching junctions. Occasionally um, we'll have to operate manual junctions. Um, that's always going to be in the case where there we're found in yards basically and there's no um, speed restrictions, no fast moving trains. fly over this I think that means we're going to go straight ahead so we want to go forwards release our brakes let this build up <coughs> More amount of regulator, and we will get moving. We are speeding, which I don't want to do. We're going to hit that buffer. That was way too fast. Okay, and the last two are the two and three aspect signals. Okay, so we're learning about two aspect signals now. When more than one train operates on a railway line, they must be separated to prevent collision. Railway lines are split into blocks, and only one train is permitted into a block at any time. Entry to each block is controlled by a signal. For their most basic form, signals show stop or go, indicated by the position of the horizontal or vertical arm. These are known as semaphore or home signals. That obviously means we can go as an open, because the barrier is open. With an increase in speed and the winding nature of railways, it is not possible to see the signal far enough ahead in order to stop if it's showing red. Thus we need a warning. Second type of signal exists warns that the approaching signal of the approaching signal is a semaphore distance signal in a sin on approach to the home type. The distance signal matches the state of the home signal, allowing the driver time to slow down to stop if he is required to do so. Okay, so if it's amber and across, it means that we are not ready to go and we need to slow down. Signal's now green, so your train is clear to depart. This concludes the explanation of the two aspect signals. Okay, we are done. We didn't have to move on that one. Okay, three aspect signals. So as speed increases, the distance signal needs to be further in advance. This means that the distance signal can end up being in the same location as the previous stop signal to be economical. The two are combined into one signal featuring two arms. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so we're clear to go through this one, which is the current home signal, and that is the distance signal, which means that the next signal is at stop. If he goes, that will probably be able to stop. Now we're free to go. Okay. That's easy enough. Okay, guys, well, that is all of the tutorials for the Fowler f uh, 4f class steam train um, in the next episode we will move on to the br189 um, and we'll do primary secondary switching cabs uh, coupling and uncoupling switching junctions loading and unloading of passengers the safety system warning and stop signals and combined signals um, so I will see you guys in episode 2 of Train Simulator 2015 when we play around with the BR189, which is the electric um, pentagraph locomotive. Right, take care guys, I'll see you in episode 2.